Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Every person that has ever breathed on this planet knows that there is a God, that they have come short of what He wants them to be, and that there is an impending judgment against their sins. That's what Romans 1, 18 through 20 is saying. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This is the end of my very first week teaching through the book of Romans. I tell you, this is powerful. This just lights my fire. I don't know if that affects you that way, but let me say this, that if the book of Romans isn't one of the most favorite passages of Scripture that you have, then you don't understand the gospel. I know that's quite a statement, but I believe that that's true. And I know that most people really do not have a good revelation of the book of Romans because there is so much law and legalism being taught as gospel today, and it's not. And because of it, it's what our experience is is so contrary to the book of Romans that most people, there's just a disconnect. They, they just can't understand it because the traditions and the doctrines of man make this word of no effect. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. And so, I, as we teach through the book of Romans, this is Paul's masterpiece on the subject of grace. And if you can follow with me and follow these things that we're saying, I tell you what, this will set you free from the religious condemnation that is so prevalent in the majority of people today. I know that there's some people watching this program that think, man, I don't see a problem. I'm saying this in love, but if you don't see a problem in the church today, and if you don't recognize that People, they may be born again. They may be on their way to heaven, but they certainly aren't even close to living the abundant life that Jesus purchased for them. They live under guilt and condemnation. They're as sick as their neighbors that don't know the Lord. They're as poor. They're as fearful. They're as stressed out. There were so many people during this pandemic, Christians that panic just as much as people that don't even know the Lord. There is, there is no reason for that if you understood the gospel. If you know the gospel, it'll set you free. Not only will it be the power of God to getting your sins forgiven, but it'll be the power to setting you free from the fear that grips other people, the negativism, the dread, the sickness, the disease, on and on and on you go. Those are radical statements, but they're absolutely true. And so I've got a brand new book out on this. We've got my living commentary that we're offering. We've got DVDs. We've got testimonies of people that were just transformed by the grace of God. And I tell you, it would be really good. As a matter of fact, you know what I'd like to do today is to play one of these testimonies about Virginia Croy. It's on our very first grace encounter this is one of the most miraculous testimonies that I've ever heard. And I mean, it's a miracle the way that she got hold of the teaching and the way that God set her free. So I'd like you to watch this. This is one of the uh, two DVDs that we're making available free of charge. And this is just one testimony out of five on this DVD, Virginia Croy. Watch this and I'll be back at the end of the program. I was born into this church in this religion. My father was a pastor. We weren't allowed to wear pants. We had to wear dresses. We could not cut our hair, wear makeup, jewelry. My mother made us live it. I never went to ball games, never went to a bowling alley, never did anything because they were called worldly things and that people would sway us and lead us to hell if we got mixed up with them. As a young girl, if, if we were out playing and the neighbors come out, we had to go in the house. We were not allowed to mix with anybody or um, be with anyone else. We listened because we were told if we didn't, God would strike us with a sickness. He would make us um, something happen in our life. It, like we could even possibly die. But one day I got sick. I was very ill. Somebody told me my appendix burst. I just know something exploded inside me. I was so sick. My hair fell out of my head. My fever was so high I could peel the skin right off my face. We were not, definitely not allowed to go to the hospital. If you did, you truly left God and were going to hell. 
they would set me on the couch and put books around me and my husband would go off to work and there I sat, couldn't, couldn't walk. My two young children had been taken away from me for someone else to care for. And I was desperate. I wanted my healing. I couldn't understand why God did this to me when I was such a good Christian. I would sit on my couch every day saying, God, if you're really there, who are you and what do you want from me? Because I had come to a point that there mustn't even be a God. And in my ignorance, I didn't even know what I was saying. But God heard my plea. And one day I pulled my Bible in my lap and I went, wow never saw this before. I started reading and it was so strange and incredible and I, I got scared and I said, oh, the devil couldn't take my life. I stayed out of the hospital. He tried to get me to go in there, but no, I stayed out. So now he's trying to deceive me. So I put the Bible beside my couch. And it was about three days later, I heard a voice speak to me. And he said, why aren't you reading my word? I said, who are you, Lord? He said, read my word. And I said, no, the devil's trying to deceive me because he wants my soul. And he said, no, the devil does not know my word to deceive you. He only knows my word to accuse you. Now read my word. I pulled that Bible back up in my lap and I was so afraid to open it. I, I, I thought it was going to explode. But I opened it up and I started reading. I don't know where I read. I just know that I couldn't stop. And I just read and read and read. And something happened inside, just like, just like months earlier, something had exploded in me. Now something exploded up in here. I couldn't explain it. I couldn't tell you what happened. I just knew it was strange and different. And so one day I was out in the yard sale and I found this TV that sat there and said free. And the man told me it was broken, that it didn't work, but he had just put it out in case somebody wanted it for parts. So I took it home, and sure enough, it worked when I plugged my VCR into it. Okay. When I would go to show my son movies, I would stick them in first, because every time I turned the TV on, it would make this loud sound. So I would stick the movie in first, then turn on the TV. One day, I don't know why, but I turned the TV on first. A lot of people that stand up and they preach hellfire and damnation and they say, boy, you're a sinner and you're going to hell and I'm telling you the gospel. No, that's not the gospel. And here comes this man's voice over the air. There was no picture. There's nothing, but I could hear this man speaking just like I'm speaking to you. There's probably people watching this television program that you know that God's real. That's the reason you're watching a Christian program. And yet you just despair of ever having God really move and manifest in your life because you feel that you've got to do everything just right. He was talking about God and this Jesus who came and did this, this work on the cross who took away our sins and did all this. It was incredible. I just couldn't get enough of it, and I, I, but I, I just had to hear it. And so the next day, I took my son's tapes uh, his movies and I put tape over the hole so that I could stick it in and record. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that emphasizes God's unconditional love and grace. And then that afternoon when I put my son to bed, I sat down, stuck that tape in and listened to it. And it was so strange. I'm like, I never heard anything like this, but I was so compelled. I just had to listen to it again and again. You know what's really strange? Nothing else came over that TV. I just got him. We have a phone center so to make this as available to you as we possibly can. If you'll tell them that you'd like the tape on the true gospel, we'll get that in the mail to you right away. So please call or write today. Through that is where I started then getting CDs from Andrew and, and I couldn't afford them. But one nice thing about Andrew is he gave them away free. Andrew Womack, and this is the first tape in a series, a four-tape series that I'm doing. I started listening to Andrew's tapes of God Wants You Well, uh, The Believer's Authority, and I started to realize that I could have this deliverance. I, a woman, could have this. God loved me. He wasn't up there waiting to strike me dead if I didn't read or if I didn't do something right. 
it, it was incredible. But because of all that, my husband knew something was going on and I would start talking about this Jesus that he didn't understand and know. And so he got very abusive uh, verbally and, and he had threatened me and told me not to speak the name of Jesus. And I wasn't allowed to have the radio on and I wasn't allowed to have mail in the house. See, see, when, when you talk Jesus to them because they don't understand, it made them angry. You could talk about God, everything about God was okay, but don't say that Jesus thing. Don't say Jesus was God. Don't, don't talk about Jesus. I would still keep going back to that church. I, I started to have my eyes open, know they were teaching wrong. I would just start speaking right out loud in church. That's wrong. They're not saying the right thing. And he got very embarrassed and, and told me I couldn't go to church anymore. Now I was out of the church. My husband still was going to that church. Um, he still put the children in their school. And each day I had to trust God that he would keep us together because it was really, really pulling us apart. I was one way and my husband was taking my children and gone another way. He told me later that he would do things to try to make me leave him so that he could take me to court and get my children so I could never see him. He was just that angry that I was using the name of Jesus. So um, I got pregnant with my fourth child. I was in labor for a week and I was trying to have him at home. Finally, I said to my husband, something's wrong. He said, how do you know? I said, because I had three others, something's wrong. So my sister said to him, are you going to let her lay there in that bed and die like everybody else in that church? He finally took me to the hospital. When I got there, they started to do an examination, discovered my baby had already stopped breathing, that he had died. They said, you have to do an emergency C-section. They, they um, just ran me off immediately. One person from my old church called me while I was in the hospital and said, why didn't you let God do with you what he wanted to? Why didn't you make your life right and let God take you like he wanted to? Because a lot of the people in there die in childbirth. They had literally shocked him back to life. They didn't even know if his heart would hold out. But it did, and God put him in perfect health. And so it was through that that my husband had to come out of the church because really the children weren't allowed to go to school there any longer. Now my husband didn't believe, but now he had nowhere to go. And it was through that that he um, started coming to know the Lord then because now he wasn't getting that a word. He wasn't hearing them daily. And now God could start talking to him. It's been a long journey, but it's been an incredible one. And now God has restored my husband to the faith. I, my husband's believing now. All my children believe. He has put us in a Bible believing church. And we are now worshiping together as a family. The legalism has such a strong hold on you that every day I have to keep in Christ. I, I think each day God takes another chain off of me, the chains of bondage that were, that were binding me. And He just, I, I, I literally can hear Him falling on the floor as He clinks them off of me, as He cuts them away and sets me free. I can cut my hair and not worry that I'm going to go to hell. I can stick on a necklace and some earrings and not worry that I'm going to go to hell. If I make a mistake, I just know he's going to pick me up. He's going to love me. He's going to put his arms around me and love me, not inflict a sickness on me or cause one of my children to die. I couldn't walk away on my own. I was powerless to do anything. 
but now through Christ I can do all things. Man, wasn't that powerful? I tell you, Virginia has become a good friend, and I've talked to her a number of times, and it's just miraculous. I mean, to me, she is a trophy of grace. And we've got another testimony on here, too, about a good friend of hers, Caroline Yeager. They were both in that same church. It was a cultist church, and uh, they both came out of it. And I tell you, these women have been set free, and I just love them. It's, it's awesome what God has done. And there are some of you watching this program that you related to some of these things that she was saying. You know, it's kind of extreme what she's describing. It's not that bad for everybody, but it's the same principle. It's just varying degrees of badness. I would say that the average Christian today is living under this same mindset that you've got to do all of these things and that God is an angry God and that He's got to be appeased. But see, under the New Covenant, it's different. Jesus came and bore the wrath of God. Let me turn over and use this verse out of John chapter 12. And in verse 30, well, let me just start reading it, verse 30. It says, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. People often take that 32nd verse and say that if we will just preach Jesus, lift him up properly under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he'll draw all men unto him. And from that, they decide that if multitudes of people are coming, then they must be really preaching the gospel. They don't base it on what the content is, just basically on the numbers of people that are coming. You know, I could spend multiple programs on this. I'm just going to say it quickly, but we've got mega churches. During the last 20, 30 years has been the rise of mega churches, not only in the U.S., but all over the world, and things aren't getting better. They're getting worse. We've got people coming to these mega churches in mass, but they aren't being taught the Word of God. Many of them have been nothing but inoculated against the true gospel. I think it's wrong to interpret this, that if you just preach the gospel, it'll draw large numbers of people. I can guarantee you, I've been to some of the mega churches and they have compromised is the reason they draw large numbers of people. They've turned it more into a performance than they have a ministry to people. This isn't talking about that if you draw, just lift up Jesus properly, He'll draw all men unto Him. If you look in the King James Version, that word man is italicized which means that it wasn't in the original language. It was added because of trying to make it grammatically correct. And I'm not against that. I praise God that the King James people had enough integrity to show that when they had to add a word, they would say it wasn't exactly in there, but this is what we think it means. Like, for instance, when Jesus, you know, they came out to arrest Him and they said, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And He said, I am He. Well, they put the word He there to make it grammatically correct, but they put it in italics because actually what Jesus said was, I am the same thing that was in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses said, Who are you? And he said, I am that I am. That was the name of God. And so when they asked Jesus who he was seeking, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am is what he literally said. And because it's italicized, you can see that. Well, here, this word men is italicized. So what he literally said is, if I be lifted up, I will draw all unto me. It didn't say all what. And so they just assumed it was talking about men. But look at the next verse. It says, this he said, signifying what death he should die. When he was talking about being lifted up, this wasn't talking about being extolled and preached about. It was talking about when he would be put on a cross and lifted up on a cross that he would draw all judgment unto him. That's the subject in verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all judgment unto me. So the reason I bring that out is to say is that all of God's judgment against my sin and your sin was placed on Jesus. God is not going to judge you for sin. 
Now, I'll explain this much more when we get into Romans chapter 6, but I, let me just say this right here because somebody might take what I'm saying and thinking, so I can just go live in sin and I'm not going to be judged. Well, not by God. God placed your judgment on Jesus if you're born again. Now, if you aren't born again, you will have to answer for your own sins. But if you've put faith in Jesus and made Him your Savior, you receive what Jesus deserves, not what you deserve. But does that mean that it's okay for you to go live in sin? It means that God's not going to punish you, but there still are consequences to your sin. You go live in sin, you are going to give Satan an inroad into your life and he will come in and eat your lunch and pop the bag. He will destroy you. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief cometh for no other purpose except to steal, kill, and to destroy. You go live in sin, Satan is going to start stealing, killing, and destroying from you. God will still love you, but you will suffer for it. If you were to take what I'm saying right here and go out and say, man, I'm going to go live in sin because all of my judgment was placed on Jesus. So you go out and rob a bank and they catch you, they arrest you, they try you, you're guilty, you go to jail and you know what? God is not going to hold that sin against you. He will love you and you could fellowship with Him in your jail cell. As you rot away in jail, God will still love you and treat you just like you never sinned. But is that what you want? No, there's still consequence to sin. Maybe not from God because He placed that judgment on Jesus, but you are going to have to live with men. And if you break their laws, there are consequences. And not only physical men, but Satan. When you live in sin, Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You go out and commit sin, you just gave Satan an inroad into your life and he will take his pound of flesh from you. You don't want to do that. You know, I'm out of time today, but again, I'd like to encourage you to get this grace encounter that you heard Virginia's testimony today, or you could get this other one. There's five testimonies on each one. We're making these two available to you as a gift no charge to it. We've got other things. Please listen to our announcer as he gives you all of the detail about how you can receive these products. And please call or write today and join me again next week as we continue this teaching through the book of Romans. Andrew is pleased to announce the release of his brand new hardback book titled Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. This brand new book includes all of Andrew's personal study notes and commentary on the book of Romans compiled from Andrew's Life for Today Study Bible and Living Commentary. This valuable resource is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace, is also available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Today, you heard Andrew's personal revelation on the book of Romans. You can study through the entire Bible with Andrew when you get his continually updated living commentary. This extraordinary resource contains his personal study notes, footnotes, and commentary on over 25,000 Bible verses. Andrew has priced this valuable study tool at only $120. Go to awmi.net to download yours today. Also today, Andrew's offering the Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs as his free gift to you when you write or call. This special offer is a $50 value, absolutely free when you contact us today. Or you can get each of these valuable resources as part of the Romans package. This package includes Andrew's Living Commentary, as well as the Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace, hardback book, your choice of either the CD or DVD album, and Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs. This incredible package has a catalog value of $275, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $197. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. 
While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I want to let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries, that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers, have actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. And there's just a lot of things we do. So when you support here, you are helping us reach people all over the world. I tell you, I'm excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. I felt that he was just speaking truth. The perspective is so different. It's so new and the, the understanding runs so deep. God has given us everything that we need in seed form and the Word of God has to be sown in your heart. Man, that is powerful. I know that he gets before the Lord and there's always a freshness, even on things that we already have revelation on. There's a today in time word. You have to get to where you believe in the power of words every moment of every day. When you start speaking to your problem and commanding it to leave, that's when you start seeing great things happen. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's word and truth, it is the gospel truth. For over 20 years, Karis Bible College has been training and empowering students to know who they are in Christ and step into their God-given calling and purpose. Karis Worship specializes in guiding believers into the presence of God. Experience the transformative power of praise and worship with Standing from Karis Worship. Standing will build you up and remind you of the power you have when you stand in God's love. Available as a CD, this album features 10 tracks that will keep your mind focused on God. Go to awmi.net to get your copy today. I want to let you know that we're moving all of our live stream productions of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College to our gospeltruth.tv format. We have a lot of teaching there, not only of myself, but many other people. But now we're moving all of the live streams there. So if you ever want to watch any live stream that we are producing, the place to go is gospeltruth.tv for all of our live streaming. You will be blessed.